Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. You guys might know that Lori's out of town. And you guys may know that Lori kind of has told me that I shouldn't get any more big snakes. However, today, I'm going to get another big snake. And so my buddy Chad, who actually had a handful of reticulated pythons over the last few years, has slowly been downsizing those retics because, you know, just life has changed and that happens when you have big snakes. Sometimes it's like, okay, I can't really take care of these guys anymore. And he's been kind of slowly giving me the animals, including Sunfire here, which I absolutely love. So he kept one last animal that was a gorgeous animal. And he was like, I'm just gonna keep this last one as a pet. Well, he called me up this morning and was like, Brian, I really need to rehome this animal. Could you come get it and of course what am I gonna say of course I am because I really am gonna love this animal but before we go I've got to tell you that there's always that one day that you know fall has hit and that's the day that I have to bring my guy Speedy in from outside he's had a wonderful summer in my backyard he's definitely grown a bit he's eaten a whole lot of grass and all kinds of other stuff but it was getting cold I mean this is the first day that it literally isn't gonna warm up past the low 50s Fahrenheit so it's time to bring him in so he's gonna spend the rest of the winter in BHB like he always does. Yeah, he gets in the way a little bit. The crew sometimes is like, oh my God, he's always in the way. He is absolutely a character. I love him here. As much as I love going home and seeing him in the backyard, I love seeing him here because he is so much fun. So Speedy's gonna be with us for a little bit here at BHB and I'm sure we'll do some Speedy cams along the way. And with that said, let's go ahead, gear up and hit the road. go against the wishes of your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend or your parents or something like that. Uh, in this case, I had to make an executive decision. Lori's out of town and uh, let's, you know, frankly, obviously I really love this snake. I saw it a couple months ago and ever since I saw it, I was like, oh my God, that thing is so incredible. Uh, with that said, uh, do me a favor. Don't tell Lori, okay? And, uh, and just like most snake deals, uh, yeah, we're meeting in a parking lot. Just to set things up here, I'm actually in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, actually, the University of Michigan football team is actually playing, so this parking lot is usually empty, but uh, because the game is on, it's, uh, it's, it's busy today, so it's gonna be a little weird pulling out a big snake in a parking lot. Hopefully, people won't think we're absolutely crazy. Of course, my buddy Chaz over here, so let's uh, let's go ahead and see this snake and uh, let's get this thing going for sure. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous! Oh, dude, that thing is ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's right, this is actually a mochino, which is a mocha and a albino, and it is crazy. Just look at the color, and this thing's, a, and you said this is a boy? Yep, male. This is a boy, and uh, he's cool, he's chill? He is. He is good? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you didn't say that as confidently as I'd like you to. He's usually great. I <laughs> hope he uh, isn't agitated from the drive. Oh, he'll I be fine. Oh, he's so sketchy when you're pulling out a big snake in a parking lot, you know? He's nice and warm right now, but look at the beautiful, oh my gosh, this thing is so absolutely gorgeous. That is one pretty snake, man. Holy cow. It's okay, little sweetie. So, okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer into a container I brought. We're gonna go ahead and get this little guy home, get him set up, and uh, should be good to go, but that is a gorgeous snake. All right, so let's just go ahead and get him tucked in here. It's definitely a little chilly outside, so it's nice and warm in the car, and uh, we got about an hour and 15 minute drive to get back to the Reptarium. <laughs> and we're back here at the Reptarium. I'm telling you what, this sucker is beautiful. Again, this is a Mochino. 
unbelievable color on it and it hasn't been handled like this a lot so it's going to have to be a little bit of habituation it's going to take us some time before it's probably going to be hanging out over here at the Reptarium but again we'll probably keep them over at BHB for six or eight weeks kind of a little quarantine period and at that point we can be handling it a lot so that when we can bring it over it'll hopefully handle a little better because this guy is all over the place but it'll be great when he's settled in starts to feed and all that good stuff and speaking about feeding there's actually something I wanted to talk to you about about feeding I want to talk to you guys about this particular thing because a lot of people have asked me you can see right now Perdita I've opened the cage she's definitely fired up to eat right now so if I went in front of her right now she may think I'm food so what a lot of people will do I just have to make sure she knows I'm not food a lot of people will actually take their snakes out just like this and put it in what they call a feeding bed you put it in the feeding bed and now you feed the animal and that's the way it goes and people have asked me, why don't I do that? Or what do I think about that? And I want to kind of break it down. Number one, I want to start by saying, if you do that, if you take your snake out and you put it into a feeding bin and it works for you, that's completely fine. But the idea is, is that the animal won't associate you going in its cage and thinking that you're food because you're putting it in a feeding bin, which is completely understandable. But this is what I think about it a little bit. Number one, it does cause a little bit of stress to the animal, right? Because you really shouldn't be moving your animal before you feed it. And some animals, when you do move it, won't eat at all. So that causes one little step. The other thing is, is that if every time you open that cage to go into the animal, you feed the animal. So say you feed it once a week, but you don't handle it the other six days. Yes, it's probably going to think you're food. But if for six days you're handling it and only one day you're feeding it, the animal is probably not going to associate you going in the cage with feeding all the time, right? Or you can just take a snake hook or something like that, tap the animal, make it sure it knows you're not food and you're 100% fine. Now, the other thing that you think if you kind of go down that path is that if they think that you taking it out and putting it in a box is food, maybe every time you go in the cage to take it out, it's thinking it's getting fed and it starts going to food mode. So I personally don't use feed boxes. I'm not against them. I think they can completely work. I just think that the rationale behind them isn't as well thought out as people think it is, right? If you handle your animal a lot and only feed it one out of every seven times you handle it, it's probably not going to consider you food when you open the cage, number one. And number two, if you are taking it out and putting it in that box, it's going to potentially think that you're feeding it every time you try to take it out. So in my personal humble opinion is snake feeding boxes don't really serve the purpose that people think they do. Again, I'm not saying it's wrong if you do that. I'm not saying you should stop doing it if it's working for you continue to do it I personally just think it's a little added stress to the animal and something that doesn't need to be done but I'd like to hear your opinion on it down in the comments I've talked to you guys before about the fact that I'm so busy and I love listening to audiobooks and Audible has been a great supporter of the vlog in the past. So I just wanted to mention that right now I'm listening to an amazing audiobook. It's actually Bob Irwin's The Last Croc Hunter. Definitely I suggest you checking this one out. And with the membership to Audible, you actually get one free book a month. I would suggest The Last Croc Hunter has that one book. You also get exclusive sales and 30% off all regularly priced Audible books. Audible is where so many inspired voices and compelling stories open listeners to new experiences and ways of thinking. There's no better place to listen than Audible because now Audible members get even more exclusive audio fitness programs, audiobooks, Audible originals, and more. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet now. And with Audible originals, the selection has gotten even more custom with content made for members. Audible originals are exclusive audio titles that are created by celebrated storytellers from worlds as diverse as literature, journalism, theater, and more. Every month, Audible members get one credit good for any audiobook they choose, plus two Audible originals from a changing selection that they can't get anywhere else. Plus, your books are yours to keep. With Audible, you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. Don't like your Audible book? Exchange it, no questions asked. Some of the other things that I love about Audible is you can share audio excerpts with anyone you want. You have chapter navigation, and for a guy like me that's mind's always moving fast, you can actually control the speed that you're listening. So you can go slower if you'd like, or in my case, I like to go fast. Get your first Audible book for free and two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. Just go to audible.com slash Brian Barczyk or text Brian Barczyk to 500-500. Again, audible.com slash Brian Barczyk or text Brian Barczyk to 500-500. I always tell you guys that I read your comments. Of course, the feeding box was a comment that you guys made. And also another comment was, why don't snakes eat when they're in shed? You can see Snaz is in shed right now. And see those eyes are really what they call in blue or really milky. Let's go ahead and think about what 
snake shed is about. So snakes basically have three layers of skin. The outer layer is called an epidural layer. That layer is basically a layer of dead skin and it can only stretch so far. So unlike a human that as we grow our skin stretches, these guys have a set amount that they can actually stretch. What happens is when they grow and get to that maximum amount of that shed, the outer layer is ready to be molted or shedded off. The next layer, that kind of mid layer, actually excretes a secretion that has like this milky look to it, which causes their eyes and all their body to kind of go blue. That's why when a snake is shedding, people say, oh, they're in blue. Well, now, once they shed out, that next layer can grow. So basically what happens why a snake doesn't eat when it's in shed is number one, its eyes are blue. So basically they can't see really well, which means that they probably aren't gonna eat really well. The other thing is that outer layer has kind of stretched to its maximum capacity. So it doesn't wanna eat more because then if it eats more, it's gonna grow more. And that's why it's shedding is so that the next layer of skin can grow that much more. So once you understand the anatomy of what a snake shed is doing, you can understand why typically they don't eat and shed. Now, occasionally some snakes will eat and shed, which is completely fine. There's nothing really wrong with that. But the fact is, is usually once a snake sheds, within a couple days, it's very hungry because again, it's ready for growth. So I hope that answered both the snake feeding box question and why snakes don't typically eat and shed. All right, guys, you gotta check this out. This is the new animal. It will be in addition to the reptarium. Oh my soon. god, this is what I thought it was. Isn't oh it my god, insane! This it's is super gorgeous. tame too. It's a little bit weird about handling in the sense that I think that they played with it, but have, maybe not around the neck as much. So it kind of moves around a little weird. So we're gonna have to do it. But uh, this is the machino, correct? This is the machino, exactly. Yes. Oh my god, I was talking to some people yesterday about this, and they were so excited when we were out. Oh man, I was so stoked about it. It's this. gonna be a great animal here oh, at the reptarium because. It's big, but it's not too big. Exactly. It's beautiful. Look at that. Oh my god, look at that color. <laughs> I know. So even it's so even different in from all the other stuff we have too, oh, which is nice. Yeah, exactly, because it's radically different. Doesn't right, look yeah. Like it's not exactly. black this, or white. It's yeah. cool because it has that wild type pattern too yeah, on exactly. it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's a beauty, huh? So uh like I said, we'll get it we got a little bit of shed, so I'm gonna soak it right now, uh get it in some quarantine, and then uh, eventually it'll come over here. We'll figure out where to put it. And, oh yeah. But uh pretty excited about it, huh? Oh yeah, dude. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I've been, I've been waiting for this thing to come in. Oh, and by the way, guys, uh, I do need a name for this Mochino right here. It's a male. Uh, it's uh, obviously about 10 foot long, something like that. No idea what to name it. Down in the comments, let me know what name you think we should name this guy. I'll pick the top three or four that you guys comment, and I'll do a poll over on the community side. So uh, let me know what you guys think. We actually open up at the Reptarium tonight, so we have a bunch of our normal maintenance. You know, just cleaning, fresh waters, make sure the glass all looks good, stuff like that. So a lot to get done to get ready to open up tonight. And it's time, folks. It's been a while since we've uh, kind of taken you along on the journey of a reptarium night. So let's go ahead and open up and have a good time. Hey guys, hi, how are you? Hi, hi how are you? How's it going? Hi, thank you. I like that. That's awesome, buddy. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Hi, how are you? Hi, guys. Hi, how are you? Hi, how's it going? Thank you for coming. How are you? I'm working on my fears. Oh, we're helping you. Thank you. All right, I'm here with you. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Hey, we watch you all the time. Yes. Please <laughs> meet you. Having a good time at the Reptarium tonight. Definitely a lot of people, a lot of fun. Uh, about an hour, hour and a half into the day. It was a bonkers morning for sure. I'm gonna squeeze through. Can I squeeze through here real quick? I'm so sorry, you're okay. Oh. Let's see what else we have out here. Got Joe over here. Oh, uh, uh, we got little Raul out, the chameleon. So as you can see, it definitely is a fun night here. I am always excited when I get a new snake, and that is a gorgeous snake. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, here's another video of another giant snake, a playlist of giant snakes if you so like. Over here, you can hit that subscribe button. While you're at it, can you turn those post notifications on for me, please? Have a wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.